everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be doing a book review for you, and it'll be on The Water Wars. This is by Cameron Stracher. Uh, that's the whole cover, kind of neat looking. Um, this was published in 2011 by Sourcebooks Fire. It's about 240 pages, and it's a young adult fiction title. Um, I was first attracted to it kind of by the cover, and then by the synopsis on the back, so it kind of drew me in. Um, this is set in a world sort of on Earth's future. The polar ice caps have melted, rivers have dried up, uh, lakes. There's a water shortage. I mean, people are are dying by the hundreds of millions because of a lack of water, because of the diseases that run rampant because of this. Um, it's pretty bad. And there's been wars, of course, fought over it, hence the title, Water Wars. Um, the North American continent has quite changed. There's a map at the beginning. That shows, and you can just about see that, there's not the state boundaries anymore. It's broken up into, like, this whole area here is now California. Mexico seems to have vanished. There's the Dakotas, Arizona, Republic of Texas, the Republic of Minnesota, the Republic of Illinois, Republic of Louisiana, and then the Great Coast. And up here is the Empire of Canada. And they're all very definite boundaries. You need special papers to cross between these areas. It's not like driving across the United States where all you need is a driver's license. Uh, this book follows our main character, who's a 15-year-old girl by the name of Vera. We meet her two-year-old, or, or brother who's two years older than her, named Will, and they live with their parents, uh, the mother who is actually very, very sick and bedridden, possibly because of these diseases that are going around and this lack of hygiene and lack of water. Um, the book kind of starts out with her kind of heading off to school to catch the bus. It's kind of a remote bus stop, so she's really the only one getting on there. And as she approaches the bus stop, she sees a young boy there, um, standing there, drinking water out of, like, a plasticine cup. And then he kind of just dribbles the remainder of the water across the stand. She, uh, across the stand. And she yells at him to stop because there are fines for wasting water. And what is he doing? Just pouring it out in the sand where there are these shortages. And she gets to talking to him and finds out he's, he's from a fairly well-off um, family. His father's a driller. He drills for water. So they don't have any kind of um, as many water restrictions as everybody else has. And um, the only reason he's even there is he's waiting for a ride to go someplace else. They're talking while she's waiting for the bus and he's waiting for his ride. And um, during this meet, he says uh, he's planning on going to a scavenger site. Does she want to come? So, well, she's got school, maybe afterwards. But then her thoughts, you hear, um, she says, I said I would try, but I knew my father wouldn't let me. He didn't want me going anywhere after school. Not with this boy, not with any boy. It was dangerous to hang around strangers. Just last year, there had been a virus and three kids in our class had died. So there's these worries of viruses and things going around. But literally, as you read, like, it's either that night or the next night, she invites him to dinner at her family's house. And I'm thinking, you've just met this person. You really have had one conversation with them. And you say your father's worried about diseases. Now you're inviting him into your home to possibly expose any any of the rest of the family to viruses. So there was a lot of these weird kind of inconsistencies within this book as I was reading it that uh, right off the bat I'm thinking, that, that makes no sense. You just said one thing and now you're doing completely the opposite. Uh, the relationship between Kai and Vera seems to jump pretty quickly. Um, he says he has some sort of secret he knows that the government is keeping, um, basically to do with water. He knows of some sort of secret river or something, but he's not willing to say much to her or to her brother Will. Um, they spend a little bit of time within the next weeks or so just hanging out, and the the two, um, Will and Vera, are trying to find some more information out from him, but again, he doesn't say much. He does take Vera one time to a site, like, off, off to scavenge someplace, and he says, dig here with your hands, and she digs a little bit, he says, keep digging, and eventually her hands come up moist. There was, like, he found a little area of water, so how do you know it was there? He says, I just knew. Um, again, he's still not willing to give up uh, any of this information, though. And uh, so one day, uh, Vera goes to the bus stop, and for the uh, first time, he's not there and starts to worry, you know. And so she talks to Will, and after school, they decide to go to where he lives to check out, you know, if he's okay and everything. And when they get there, they see something has occurred to make them very worried for his safety. And it looks like perhaps someone has kidnapped him. And most of this book is... The search for Kai. What happened to him? Who took him? And can they rescue him? And during the course of these events, Vera and Will fall into quite a bit of danger. They're captured. They get away. They're captured. They get free. They get captured. They get... This happens so many times in the book. It's, it's just a repetitive thing 
there's different people kind of involved, different groups of people that kind of capture them, and, and ta they keep taking them further north. And I'm thinking, first of all, why are they even bothering? That these two are just kids. They have no importance to these people that, are, that end up capturing them. Why would they lug them all the way up to the next boundary or across the next border? What is it in for them? It, it, a lot of this didn't quite make sense. Along the way, they meet um, some pirates, uh, pirates in terms of they steal water or whatever uh, they need. Um, and they come across this one pirate named Ulysses. Another kind of quick relationship between the kids and this man. Um, he's more of like a father, ends up being like a fatherly figure to them. Again, too quick of a relationship. I almost got the feeling that the author was rushing through these things because it was such a small book. He had to develop these relationships quickly um, so that the story could kind of continue. So just, like I said, there's things like that were too fast, too quick, too repetitive in the capture release, capture release, capture release. There's also um, the dialogue sometimes and things were, was kind of strange. I'm going to find this one passage. There's one point, without giving anything away, but there, Vera, her brother, and some other people are on board this jet. They're trying to get away from some people. And there's this pilot by the name of Sula. She's flying it. And it says here, and this is, remember, this is in the, uh, told from the point of view of a 15-year-old girl. The explosion shook the jet, sending a spiraling and a dangerous plunge until Sula regained control of the aileron. The aileron. I'm thinking, wouldn't a kid just be saying until she gained control of the plane or the jet or until she regained control, but the aileron specifically, isn't that the flaps on the plane? Even I don't know the name of what they're called. I believe that's what they're called. But when I read that, I'm thinking, why would a kid come up with that particular word? The dialogue sometimes just kind of threw me for a loop, and it, it wasn't something I was expecting. Um, overall, I think that it had such good potential, the, the plot, the idea behind the story, but then it was just, it just didn't really seem to go anywhere. It just kind of kept looping around and around and around. The same theme, the same things happening, and like I said, the whole thing with the relationships. Overall, I'm afraid I only gave this two out of five stars. It was a bit of a disappointment. And not a book I would definitely recommend. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. See you next time.